Hey you, watching this video, spread love. Bienvenidos and welcome back, familia. I'm Leonardo Torres and this is our good friend Mustachio and we would like to welcome you to another episode of the Tower of Torres podcast, the podcast that's spreading love all around the world, bringing you interviews with songwriters, musicians, performers, pastors, and so much more. This is episode five and I'm excited because the gentleman that we have on today's show is the lead singer of a band that we've covered on rock metal mondays they're an american christian rock band from denver colorado their song tension just hit number one for eight weeks straight in both the christian and the mainstream billboards and it is an absolute honor to have this gentleman on the show he is aaron watkins from the band called random hero sit back and enjoy aaron watkins from random hero welcome to the tower of torre senor what's up man how's it going thanks for having me I'm, I'm excited to have you on here, man. We really love the, your song, Tension. It was a powerful song, and, and you know, a lot of people liked it because it, it was high energy. It had a lot of, a lot of, uh, I don't know, just reminded me personally, uh, you know, of something I would add to like my workout. Uh, yeah. <laughs> soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. Thank you. That means a lot to us. Thank you. Yeah, man. For for people who may not know uh, what ran who Random Hero is, could you just briefly go into who you are and what Random Hero? Uh, how Random Hero came about? Yeah, so we're a, we're a Christian rock band. Um, we've been around for many, 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 many years, uh, which is which is awesome to say. Uh, kind of you know dates us a little bit, but um, you know we we formed as a band back in oh my goodness, um, way back oh seven I think, and uh, we've just been continuing on. I mean it's been an interesting season. You know, actually, it's just been an interesting career to lead the lives that we've got to lead and, and tour the world and to see so many wonderful people and, um, you know, people that enjoy our music and um, get to hear the message of, of hope that we bring. And it's, you know, it's there's nothing in the world like it, my friend. It's it's <laughs> like uh, living the dream. And, um, you know, sometimes the dream means you waking up at a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, um, you know, everybody pays their dues and we love it. And so we've been around for a while. We've toured with um, tons of bands, like almost every band under the sun. And we've played with every band under the sun. And, um, you know, it's it's been a it's been a great a great journey for us. And, you know, we hope to continue it on for many years, even though COVID happened. It's been a, you know, this last year was like the weirdest year of our lives. But, yeah. um, you know, uh, we, we put out tension and with Rockfest Records and, um uh, Capital and Universal Music Group, and that was, um, I mean, this record was by far my all-time favorite record we've ever put out, and so um, it was cool to see that, you know, Tension, that song in particular, go number one for eight weeks, and that was, you know, probably one of the coolest career things I've seen, you know, and like, aside from, like, meeting some of my uh, all-time favorite bands and, you know, becoming friends with them, it's like, whoa, <laughs> this, <laughs> this was a thing, so... Um, yeah. So yeah, we we um, we met all of us. We met in Colorado, and then um, over time, we've all kind of moved to separate areas. And now the bulk of us are in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. South Carolina, and congratulations, by the way. I saw that 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 song hit the charts Thank in you. both mainstream and the Christian billboards, right? Yes, yes, and yeah, and that whole record. I mean. Once that record came out, our label, man, they crushed it. And we, we were on three separate charts, on three separate billboard charts with it, uh, within the top 10 and I believe 20 uh, on all of them. So it was, it was really neat. And there was mainstream and, you know, Christian sales and things like that. It was just like, you know, you wake up one day and you just get all these cool messages and you're like, what is going on? <laughs> well, you just answered a question I had. I was like, what, what was it like when you heard? Like, how did you hear? You woke up and there were messages on your phone? Yeah, I mean, our our label called us um, when when all when we hit all those charts when the the record actually released. Um, you know, he messaged us and said, "Congratulations, guys! This is this record's coming out strong, and we're like, this is amazing." And then, um, you know, we put out the single "Tension," and um, you know, I don't I don't think we as a band ever put a record out to be like number one or you'd be like like crazy. I mean, obviously, we all have the dreams of it being like uber successful, but um, you know, um, these little, these accolades and things that we've accomplished along the ways, it's just like, they're just like little, it's kind of just like icing on the cake of this long career that we've had. That's just been a, a beautiful adventure. That's great. And so you've been together with the band for quite some time, but how did your journey with music start? Like where, where did that start? 
Man, that's, that's a good question. So <laughs> my journey with music actually started when I was 18. And, and, and contrary to popular belief, I actually, uh, I remember being when I was younger. Uh, so my dad was in a lot of bands and like some successful bands in Wyoming. And, um, you know, he was just, just crazy, amazing shredder on the guitar and he could sing and, and do all the things. And, um, you know, uh, I kind of saw the lifestyle from a, a more secular side of things. And um, I actually never wanted to become a musician. It was never really on my radar. I was like, no, thanks. Um, I remember sitting in church one day and, and the pastor was like, God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And I was like, cool. And <laughs> um, I was like, that's cool. But I, I have three requests of him, which are which I hope he listens. And I said, I will not be a pastor. I will not be uh, a missionary and I will not be a musician. And then, <laughs> um, boom, I'm in a Christian rock band preaching the gospel and touring all over the world. So uh, we kind of tagged it as we're musicianaries going out and doing what we do. And so um, I think God got the last laugh on that one. So yeah, was, God was like, yeah, hey, that's know. cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I was always, I mean, I could always hear music when I was younger. Um, just, I would hear like these really elaborate orchestrations in my head and I could pick things out on the guitar. And, um, actually I wanted to be a drummer when I decided that music was kind of a cool thing. Um, yeah. and then, um, my dad was like, nope, no son of mine will play the drums. He's going to play the guitar and he's going <laughs> to shred like me. And, and honestly, I can, I can't shred. I think I always pretend like I can, and I pretend like I can play the drums, but I could just, I mean, I'm, I'm a singer at heart. And so um, I, I ended up um, really honing in just singing and learning the craft and uh, techniques and listening to my favorite singers and blowing out my voice a billion times to try new things. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and that that journey alone is just I mean, over the years, it's just taught me so much about, um, you know, like vocal resilience and uh, especially when it comes down to like screaming in songs yeah. and, and how to do it properly. It's like when I was younger, it was just like, let's just do it till it bleeds, you know? And then, like, <laughs> and then, like, uh, That's why you're not helpful. Yeah. You're not super helpful when you wake up the next day and you're like, something's wrong. And, um, yeah. you know, um, learning the techniques that uh, make it so you can do it night after night after night after night. And yeah, and, yeah I don't think that, I, I don't think that I ever thought that, it, this would be a, a thing for me, like something that I would do for a lifetime. And um, when I realized that this is a, this is a, this is, this is what I'm going to do, and this is what I want to do, and I'm, and I did it. I started touring. When I was 18. Um, nice. Started my first band when I was uh, 18, and then I started touring with other bands uh, years, like a couple of years later. And um, and then Random Hero came about, and it was like this is. You know, this is where my heart is. This is where I feel like we can do something special. And we started to just, you know, we started to put uh, rubber on the pavement and start making some movement. You know, and that, not that I thought it would ever be like where we are today. And that was, uh, you know, it was a cool. It, it was a. You look back on all those things and you think, man, I always thought the struggle was so tough back then. And then, it, <laughs> like, you get to a different level, and it's like the struggle is still the same. You know, <laughs> like. Uh, just on but, a different level. <laughs> yeah, just a different level, you know. But it, it's it was all, man. I'll tell you what, it's it's been an incredible journey, and not one that I have ever taken for granted. I think I've taken for granted some of the, like you know the nights we're sleeping in Walmart parking lots. But you know, it's those nights that we we get to like bond as brothers, and and we have the deep the deep conversations, and you know we get to have the hangs with the homies when they show up, you know. And it's like just you know it feels like we're constantly just in this big community of people and we're just constantly partying, but you know, we're having like these great, um, you know, interactions and it's just a great community of, of, of humans that I get to, you know, do life with. So it's, you know, awesome. can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And why random hero? Where did that come from? Where did that name come from? Uh, so th that was actually um, the name of the band before I joined, and uh, okay. they they did that as just kind of like a joke. And over time, it really just kind of morphed with us as we were as you know the band began to gain ground and and you know build steam and start moving. And, and uh, we realized that uh, people as a whole, you know, hopelessness is alive and well in the world. And you know, for us, like 
we're not firefighters. We're not policemen. You know, we're not in the military. We're not out actually like pulling, you know, doing the heavy lifting. Like we're, we're just preaching the gospel. And so, uh, for us is it was, it made more sense then. Cause it was like, you can literally change somebody's life by, by just showing them love by exemplifying the love that we were supposed to show people. And so um, then we began just saying, be a random hero. Like if you see somebody that uh, on the street, smile at him, you know what I mean? Like open the door for somebody. If you see a woman or an old lady, like, you know, help her across the street. And you know yeah. what I mean? Like just the things that people I think have gotten away from. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was, you know, that became the whole idea of it. And we actually had shirts made that that, that said, be a random hero. And That's people awesome. loved that. And I thought it was super cool. Um, you know, and yeah. uh, it's true, uh, like getting back to those, you know, that like chivalrous, chivalrous state of life where people were, you know, really being kind to one another. And that was like, right. you know, like above all else, we were just called to love people. And so that's what it's about. Right. That's that's awesome. Like uh, uh, acts of kindness without the attachment of, of what's going to be in it for me or I'll exactly. do this for you now. And then maybe later you'll you'll do some for me. I mean, there's a exactly. little a little bit of that. Uh, with with friends and stuff because you, you never know like you you help out a friend and then later on you might need help right but we yeah. don't do it with with that in, really in that's not our real initial intention to, to help other people right that's great because on, on this channel uh, one of my my main themes is to spread love i say that in every video you know you know my my daughter starts out my videos now and says hey you watching this video spread love you know and at the end i say spread love spread peace because yep. the world needs it you know and it, and yeah. as you said it's as easy as just holding the door open for someone i mean i i open the door for people sometimes and sometimes they look at me like surprised like what someone's yep. opening the door is like how is that surprising like i'm just doing yeah. something simple you know that's just what it should be I, I make a joke out of it sometimes because sometimes I'll hold the door open and it's like a lot of people coming by and I'm like, I guess I'm the new, you know, Walmart hall monitor or not Walmart, <laughs> but like, you know, whatever random stuff. I'm, I'm the new door monitor, I guess, you know, yep. letting people out, letting people in. But it is that simple. So um, if if you could narrow down the message that your band is putting out in the music, what would you say that message would be? It's kind of um, record by record, really. You know, there are things that we obviously are talking about in each different record and each different song. But if, if I can narrow it down, it's a lot of it's just it's really about hope, just holding on, like knowing that um, you are worthy and you are loved and you are you have a purpose. And I think that, you know, COVID um, it really, you know, messed a lot of people up. And I think um, it also did a lot of people some good, like for me, it really allowed me to to be home for a little bit and learn how to serve my family in a different way than I've ever been able to mm. serve them. And like, um, you know, like we, we're called to love people and serve others and, um, you know, getting to getting down to it, like, um, sure, like when all the tours and everything got canceled, it was like, oh, man, there was like this sense of hopelessness. And so you we it was just like, all right, let's let's sit in it for a minute and figure it out and then know that God's got a plan outside of this. And I don't know what it looks like right here, right now, or when we're going to be touring again, but you know, um, it, there's still hope. So, um, you know, I guess in a roundabout fashion, like our constant message is that it, we've always said it, it shows that they're loved, they're worthy, um, uh, and they're not alone. So, um, that's, that's the biggest message we have is that we want people to know that. That's great. A lot of people did end up feeling alone. Um, a lot, I know a lot of people who it drove them mad to stay at home. Like they were yep. just out about. That's how they get their energy. That's how they get you know me meaning to their mm -hmm. life. And then all of a sudden, it's like everything's closed and 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 they were frustrated. What, what what was one of the most challenging things that you faced or that someone you you know close to you faced uh, um, during the, this time? You know, I. I think having family members get COVID, well, that was pretty, that was pretty challenging. It was scary because, you know, we weren't really sure, you know, like what the outcome was going to be. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, so that was pretty, you know, it was scary. It wasn't necessarily challenging for us personally, but it was, it was scary. But I think for me, it was more of the, uh, the most challenging thing, I, I thing that I had to get over is that, you know, like we all still work, you know, and uh, my job, my job went down the drain and it was like, you know, out of the blue and, you know, we, we, our touring schedule got canceled. Everything was just done. It was like, well, what now, you know? And mm -hmm. so, you know, I definitely, ha I definitely struggled with, um, you know, feeling lost. I think you know, like, 
what is even like i think it was like for me it was like all about like me feeling lost and then finding myself in a new fashion like i wasn't like bummed that i couldn't leave the house for once i was like actually able to stay home for a long period of time and um like i said i just threw myself into serving my family like learning how to cook great meals for them and like um you know making sure the house was clean and and every like the laundry was done like these things that i haven't been able to really like get to do and just serve yeah. and spend time with my family so um you know i think at first for me it was just getting over the feeling of like well, what the heck you know like i don't i don't know what i'm doing with my life right this second and i don't know when it's going to come back and then yeah. it was like you know what i'll just I'm just going to throw myself into something beautiful and, um, you know, and the most beautiful thing I could think of was my family. So that's, that's what I did, man. That's awesome. Man. That's great. Uh, can you talk to me a little bit about your, the spiritual side of you? Were you always, did you grow up Christian or, or did that come later mm -hmm. on in your life? So I've always had, a, uh, I've always believed in God. Um, and, you know, I was, I was raised in a Nazarene church. I said that really odd with oddly. Nazarene. <laughs> I, was, I was raised in the Nazarene church and, um, you know, I, I, I really grew up like seeing the rules and um, hearing about the things that we really could and couldn't do. And as like a kid, you like, you kind of, you know, you push boundaries constantly. Like, um, and I wouldn't say all kids push boundaries, but the majority of them push all the boundaries. But um, so I, I had to have my own little journey. Like I, I got to a point where I was feeling like I was being judged for things that I was doing and, you know, and like being a believer, it was like, I didn't want to just believe in God because I was being told to believe in God. So I really had to go on my own like spiritual journey and um, long story short, like I've always led worship in church. I took hiatus from, you know, worship leading and stuff and just wanted to focus on like, who is this God? What is this? Like, what, like, who are you to me? And not just what they're telling me to know about you because right. um, all I hear is then, you know, it's words and, and words don't really mean a whole lot until you see, um, until you really see them in action. And so hmm. I went on my own little journey and I realized that, um, you know, it's, uh, it's one thing to call myself Christian and believe in God, but it's another for me personally to have a personal relationship with him that is alive mm. and raw and real and one where I know that he can handle my frustrations and my sadness because before I was like, Oh, I serve a God that's just like happy sunshine and green grass and rainbows. And like, like <laughs> that's not, I'm, 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 I'm seeing my life when I was a kid and I was like, that's not my life. So like, yeah. how can this God, like, how can this God be so cheerful when this is so awful? And, uh, you know, I, I realized that, uh, he's all about the personal relationship. He wants to know me. And I realized in that moment that it was, uh, it was actually a very distinct moment when my dad passed away. Um, you know, he, I, I realized that God is not a God who's ever going to turn his back on you. He's a God who's going to fight for you till your very last breath. And mm. to me, that's always held true that I was like, Oh, like you are actually real. You are, you are somebody and something to pursue and you see us even though we don't see you so um you know i i kind of you know i always when people are like you're in a christian rock band i always kind of like wince a little bit because it's like <laughs> you know it's such a it's it's really just like such a boxy word where it puts you in a box and i'm like i don't even know that when we die it's like i i honestly don't know when we die if god's gonna look at me and say hey aaron were you a good Christian? Were you a Catholic? Were you a good Jew? Were you a good whatever? You know, I think that, that when we meet him face to face, he's going to say, do I know you? And Ooh, that's the truth. Okay. It is just like, do I know you? And I'm like, yeah, dude, that's, that makes more <laughs> sense for me. And it's like, we have a relationship. I talk to you every day. You know how frustrated oh, I get. You man. know how happy I get. You know all these things. And so it's all about that relationship, man. So when I talk to people about my faith, I don't always just dive into like I'm a Christian because, you know, those yeah. Christian and religiosity really come with like a weight to it. So for me, it was just it's like, you know what, the weight, the real weight and the real meat and potatoes is in the relationship. It's not in the, mm. the religiosity. It's in it's yeah. in the value that you have in God's sight. And that, you know what I mean? It's what it's the reciprocity that you have together. And that's yeah. it's building because you can't have a relationship with somebody if there's no communication. Right. That's interesting because what I'm getting from what you just said is that you wanted to not just like 
I'm going to backtrack a little bit here. When I first started sure. the channel, I started out not as an atheist, but I didn't really know what to call myself. But I started mm -hmm. looking at Christian music and I and, and the closest thing that I could come to uh, a label was non-Christian. So I put non-Christian reaction to Christian music, right? And my first video sure. was Oceans. And in that video, in fact, I was wearing the same shirt <laughs> that I'm wearing today. <laughs> but it, and that and that's maybe it's symbolic somehow. But um, in that in that video, I pointed out I'm not religious. And in the comment section, people were saying, "Well, it's not about religion. I'm not religious either. I'm I'm you know, it's about the relationship with with God." And and what I'm hearing from you sounds a lot different than how some people say, because you were more interested, it seems, in how you relate to God, not yep. just say not just say, "Oh, we have a relationship because He saved me." You're right. saying, "But how? How do I relate?" Like I know how I see Him, but how does God see me? How does exactly. how does He relate to me? What am I to Him? I know what I know that exactly. He's my Savior, but what am I to Him? Has that question been fully answered? Do you think for you? I think so, man. Honestly, I it's in like a yeah, in a strange twist. Yeah, just that like for me, it's it's. You know, when you look at other people, and and I, I'm believe me, I've I'm guilty of everything, and and it's like, um, you know, judgment or whatever, or, or you get into an argument with somebody or an altercation or something. You know, it's like, you know, how does God see that person? Like, what do you? Why was this such an an interest? Why was this a, you know, why did we have this interaction? And how am I supposed to see you through Jesus' eyes? And it's like. He sees us as his children, and like, and and the thing is, is like, I I had to realize that, um, it, especially with having kids, is that my question got answered with them. Is that that man? They're just beautiful. These are little boys. They 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 do life like they don't see color. They don't see hatred. They don't see violence. They don't see any of that. They do life. They play with everybody. They laugh. They find joy in the silliest things. They get sad. And they feel emotions, but they move on. You know, like that. And it's like <laughs> I feel like. You know, as a father and as a heavenly father to a father, it's like, that's how I see you. I see you as my child. Like you are always going to fall down and you're always going to screw up, but I'm always going to be there, you know? And, but the mm -hmm. thing, the beautiful thing is, is that it's not always happy and sunshine, but you, you have to understand is that I can handle your anger. I can, I can handle your rage i can handle when you're just straight up pissed off or sad or depressed i can handle that stuff because i took all that and you don't have to feel that anymore even though you're going to you just have to real you you have to get to a point where you understand it's like you just let go and it's like okay like a child does when they scrape their leg they scream and cry for about five minutes then they're off to the next thing like it never yeah. happened you know and so it's like yeah that's, I feel like that's, that's where I see myself now. It's just like, I'm constantly, I think even when I'm 80, I'm just constantly going to be a child in his eyes that it's like, dude, you don't even know, but we still have to trust. And it's like, right. with our kids, we still have to trust. Like they have to trust us to take care of them. They have to trust us to get them from A to B safely and make sure that they, you know, they are, they are encompassing values and, and things that are in good nature and, and we are pushing them towards the Lord. And so that's just, you know, I feel like that's that's how my my question. I think that question got answered for me. Is that I, I see myself as just a child. Like, I I feel like he probably listens to me cry and complain about the dumbest things. And he's like, <laughs> I'm gonna wait. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'll just wait till you're done. And then when I get it out, and he's like, that wasn't necessary. Boom, here comes the next thing. You know, and it's like, man, sometimes God just needs us to shut up and listen and stop <laughs> doing. It. And then things are okay. But instead, we're so hectic and crazy out here that it's like we do everything and grasp on anything. And he's like, stop trying. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. And it's like, here we go. And it's same thing with yeah. parenting. You know, stop it. Stop it. Stop. And then it, once they do, they realize how easy it is. It's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. You, you just reminded me of somebody, somebody suggested that I watch a movie of the story of Jeremy Camp. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, yeah, I actually yeah. watched that uh, a couple weeks ago. It was pretty good. <laughs> and there's this, there's the part where he's breaking his guitar and he's like just slamming. He's just throwing a fit mm -hmm. in, in that room. And and in that moment, I just pictured you know just Christ just chilling back there in the, in, in the back, just letting him do his thing. And then yep. say like, okay, uh, just let it all out, let it all yep. out. I have something for you. And then boom, he finds you know yep. what he finds. No spoilers here, but so yeah, I feel and, like he's just sitting there going, "That was a really nice guitar." Yeah, <laughs> really, really nice. Um, 
<laughs> you're not gonna have that guitar <laughs> but you know what it's just it's just it's that is that's what it is like when the people talk about you know when it he says have faith like a child that's what it is it's like yeah. they believe in things that you can't see and they wholeheartedly <laughs> believe in them you know yeah. and that's you know we wholeheartedly believe in in a god that is very real and, and we see him working and moving and sometimes you see other things and have experiences of your own that you just you just know you know and that's you know that's just that's that's the beauty of it is another thing that you reminded me of was a passage and i'm an amateur still in it but there's a passage that says in order for you to enter into the kingdom you must return to a childlike state and mm -hmm. when you think of that it's like you, you just as you said you don't hold on to stuff you don't hold on to grudges you yep. you move on quickly you're curious you question yep. everything it's like there's not a question that god can't handle that's what uh um rob beckley said last week when when oh rob you had rob on other. Yeah, I had Rob on. Yeah, uh, he's such a good week. dude. Yeah, he's awesome. And he, he pointed out the same thing, actually, that you said. Being a father really gave him a bigger perspective on how God is, you know, patient with him and and, and all that and, and how he encourages his children to to ask, uh, you know, the tough questions. He'd rather them ask him than to ask some, someone else. It's so um, true, you know. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I had a, I recently had a, a, a subscriber who left me a long message in one of my, in, uh, a long comment in one of my videos. And she described uh, that a miracle had happened for her husband who had been ill, uh, but she she's struggling with a son who is a non-believer. And that not only mm -hmm. does he not believe, but he's very cynical and, and angry and mocks, sure. you know, Christ and all that. Um, and she's, she says to me, I, I just don't know what to do to try to convince him because I'm afraid that he's going to, you know, burn in hell. Um, do, do you know, I don't know if you would, uh, have any advice, but if you do, what advice would you give someone? Cause this is common actually in a, in, in a lot of people yeah. that I've come across is someone who is strong in their faith, but they feel like they don't have the answers, but they're, they're someone that they care about either a husband or, or a son is really pushing those, those. Buttons, right. You know? So man, that's, man, that's it. That's a tough question. I think, um, I, I, I'm not Jesus. I'm not anybody really to, to listen to, but honestly, in those moments, like you have to trust that, that God has a plan and, and that God knows what's best and that things work out. Unfortunately, sometimes we make choices and they affect people in ways that, um, you know, like I lost my dad to suicide um when i was 20 and that man knew the bible back and forth he knew it he believed he fought you know and now and that whole time for me it was like we were fighting this demon of alcoholism through him you know and um it was a it was a tough thing but you know the best thing you can do is is you can be angry like there's nowhere in the bible that says you can't be mad at god you could be absolutely mad at him but know that he's holding you in those moments and that he's still got you and if you you know like venting for me that's probably like the biggest thing i do when i'm driving in the car i vent it's like if i'm super angry it's like dude all right we're having this one-on-one -on -one and you and i are not seeing <laughs> you're me right, right here <laughs> so we're gonna go and let, let's go and then when i'm done and i've said all the dumb things i need to say he's like <laughs> like you said are you finished and it's like you know um pray hard that's you know like power of prayer is amazing and um i have no doubt that you know as especially as a parent you have to just put your kids in the hands of the Lord because well, none of us are promised tomorrow. And um, as a parent, that's scary. But as a believer, it's not scary. And, and knowing that um, no matter what, like I'm still going to see my dad again. And, um, you know, it's just trusting him with that. I pray. I pray for my kids constantly. And, then, you know, just man, I would say stay up, keep your head up. Keep trusting, keep believing, keep pushing forward, and that's the best thing you can do. And and keep 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 pointing towards Jesus, you know, uh -huh. in all things. That's what my mom yeah. did. Like when I would, you know, with the when I lost my dad, like the frustration that I had with it, she just man, that woman was a rock. She just pointed me towards Jesus every chance she got, and it was obnoxious to a point to where she's like, you know, every conversation we had, it was all about like Bible verses and whatnot. I'm like, dude, just. <laughs> Let's have dinner. I don't care. You know what I mean? 
now actually I look back and I appreciate it that way more because I do the same receipts. thing. I'm not I'm not like reciting Bible verses to my kids, but I'm also, you know, pointing them towards Jesus, my wife and my family. And that's like the biggest, I think, responsibility as a dad that I have, you know. That's that's one of the interesting things about the crucifixion mm-hmm. that I I looked at it not re- too recent, but um, <clears throat> it's interesting to see how much of a perfect example Christ was in that moment because he already knew someone was going to betray him for sure, and he, fed, and he fed him anyway. He sat at that table with him anyway. Yep. Then he was betrayed by his country because the because the king or the emperor at the time was like, you do whatever you want with him. He yep. was betrayed betrayed by the religious leaders. So now he didn't yep. have neither uh, politics or religion backing him. Right. And then he was whipped, mocked pu- publicly. Um, you know, um, they made fun of him with the crown of thorns and they mocked him, spat at him. And not once did he ever say, watch, when I get to heaven, who you guys are going to pay? You know, I'm putting not, cases on all you. Yeah, yeah, I'm putting cases. <laughs> exactly. You know, but, he but, never did that. Uh, Erica and I were just watching, my girlfriend and I were just watching that movie two days. Oh, <laughs> so, dude. <laughs> Probably one of my most favorite movies ever. I got to oh, plug man. this thing in so my phone doesn't die fast. But hey, I'm okay. still here. But, okay. Dude. I, that's, that's so true, though, you know? Like, he's just he just exemplified love constantly you know and that's 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 it like he that's the biggest commandment he gave us was the example of five love you know above all yeah. else love you know yeah um which i mean in retrospect you think you think about it it's just i mean sure it sounds super cheesy but it's it's the truth man love changes the atmosphere joy changes the atmosphere you know what i mean like you you can't i feel like you personally can't walk into a room without changing the atmosphere because you have one of those like crazy contagious smiles my my family when they watched your video of the the music you know they were like this dude his smile is crazy contagious and i was like you know, i feel like <laughs> we have a conversation. you know like that it, but it's true like it changes everything and like you can't I, I don't think I've ever met one person in my life that that went into a conflict like and and raged and came out on the a good side. I, I've met more people in my life that have loved that person going into the conflict and the conflict resolved like that. It changed the atmosphere, you know. So that's that's a beautiful thing about it. Yeah. Yeah, it it really is. Um I, so, uh, quick question about your your band: Are is everyone on the band in the band uh, Christian? Yeah, everybody yeah. believes, and um, through a roundabout way. Um, well, that was weird. Um, our, you know, our first drummer, even our 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 last drummer that we had, um, you know, they were both atheists before they joined the band, and then, and then it's crazy how God just moved in their hearts and then <clears throat> in their lives and. Now our our first drummer is a believer. He's been a believer. He's been in the military in the Air Force for the last twenty years, and um, you know he was an atheist before, and then came to the Lord. And it was, I mean, just a cool thing to see that like God was had a purpose for him to be in our band at that time. You know, do you know what the turning point was for him? Yeah, actually. Um, for him, was, was he always was he always an atheist or was he religious and then atheist and then back? Do you know? No, actually, he wasn't even um, he wasn't even a believer when he joined the band at first. And I mean, he was like, "God, God's cool, but you know what else is cool? Like just playing the drums and rock and roll." <laughs> you know, and it's like that. I mean, yeah. that's cool too. But um, you know, his we played a festival in Greenville, Illinois. And um, that festival, uh, just, I mean, we'd played secular shows and we'd done it all. I mean, not all of it, but we'd played with every band you, you could think of. And and he was like, we played this one festival and it was just like absolute beautiful. Like it was a Christian rock festival is our first one. And uh, he came out of that and he got, people loved on that dude so much. 
Like we signed autographs for like six hours, which is a ridiculous amount of time to sign autographs. <laughs> but you know, it was just like, let's do it. If people want to meet us, like who am I to say no? Like I'm a nobody, so let's go. So we did it. And <laughs> he came out and was different about this, and I was like, "What's what do you think it was?" And he was like, "I don't know, but I think I want I want to know a little bit more about this Jesus that y'all are oh, talking man. about." And I was like, "What?" And then, <laughs> uh, and then like two weeks later, he gave his heart to the Lord, and it was just like, "Dude, it's awesome, crazy." Like you, <laughs> you, who knows where you would be right now if you if you hadn't had this moment with us? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to have these Q and A's on my channel called uh, Q and A with a former atheist to give people the opportunity to ask, you know, just like, what was it like when you were an atheist? Well, you know, what atheists believe to give them an idea so that people can, you know, uh, just get to know the other side too uh, of it. Right. And one of the things that I explained to them, I said, you know, like, like talking to an atheist about Christianity is probably more than likely going to get you nowhere because they they're already convinced and a mind chains against its will is of its opinion still like they're just going to still be of their opinion i said if you really want like conversion what you want what you're looking for is transformation you want a person to be transformed and the best way to do that is to show them how the love of christ has actually affected your life you know let them see you happy let them see that you don't get upset easily let yeah. them see that you're kind and generous and you're spreading all this love around the world until they're the ones that are curious and say why are you so happy all the time how come covid yeah. hit and you seem to have it together how come you lost your job but you're still like happy and it's like well it's because of christ and then yep. let them initiate that conversation you know 100 percent. yeah that's, that's exactly what you reminded me um you know what, what has been one of the most like toughest decisions that you've ever had to make um as a christian or or in your band if you can um think of either one man that's that's a good question um obviously when we have to let uh when we had when we had to let some um Okay, uh, be careful. No words here. <laughs> okay. Um, probably the biggest, this the toughest decision I ever had to make was when I was younger. Um, you know, uh, I briefly touched on my dad was an alcoholic, but he, you know, my parents were divorced, and he was calling at three a.m. in the morning and trying to come home and and everything. And I was fifteen at the time, and um, you know, my mom just couldn't. She couldn't anymore she had to work she had to do all these things to take care of us and i had to be the one to step up at that point and tell my dad no i mean it was hard to say no to somebody that i loved that you know at that point in his life he was homeless and uh, it was winter and i wasn't sure where he was and that was scary and i had to tell him that he couldn't come home like this i had to tell him this isn't your home anymore and i had to you know it was, it was a tough thing like having to tell somebody that you really love that they can't um, be where you are or be with you, you know? And so um, that was one of the tough decisions. And I think also like saying goodbye to my dad was probably one of the toughest things, you know, just like uh, that. I was actually, I lied about that. That last one was like my second toughest decision. It just hit me. My, the toughest decision I ever had to make hands down was um, taking my dad off life support. Uh, my sister and I were, we were power of attorney over my dad and, uh, we had to make that decision when I think I was 20 at the time. And I even, you know, when we went in the hospital, I told the doctor, I was like, I will not make that choice. And at the end of the day, we had to make that decision. And, um, you know, I sat with him for like a good hour, maybe mm -hmm. seeing how things were going. And it was tough watching him. Like I knew at some point I had to say goodbye. And I knew that it, I knew that he just, just wasn't him anymore. And so we had to make that choice to let him go home. And so we did. And that was, it's probably the toughest choice I ever had to make. Yeah. It's toughest tough. decision. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I have a, a friend, an old friend from high school, used to be my bass player in, in, in my band when his father um, was passing, he had to make that call too. Um, he, he actually, it wasn't his mm -hmm. call really to make, um, he had aunts and uncles, but they just didn't want to make that decision. And he, so he had to, and, and after he made the decision, there was a big, uh, you know, he, he actually went to through something psychologically that he started to forget things that we went through, you know, things from high school and, and things that we, we, mm -hmm. you know, it did, it took a number on him psychologically. Um, I, and it's okay if you don't want to get into any of that, but sure. I mean, do, do you find that it that it affected you in in any strange way? And and no, 
I don't think it affected me like mentally in any strange way like that. Um, for me, it was more like emotionally. Like I think I was just I, I was mad. Like why this happened? Why? It, mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Why? And you know, I had to go through and get the help that I needed um, so I could continue to live. Because uh, one of my good friends told me she said, um, "If you can't help yourself, you will never be able to help anybody else." And I was mm-hmm. like, "What do you mean?" She's like, "You were you were so angry at everything, at God, at the world, and you know, until you get that figured out, you can't help others." And like I heard, you know, like. I put music aside for a second and we're the you know we're what we're doing is talking to him about our hope and it was like dang <laughs> like I, mean, I can hide it really well but she's like you can't hide this like it's mm-hmm. it just you can it's see big. it and i was like yeah. all right so uh so i went through you know i did dbt and um and healed and to a point where i like before i can talk about any of this but now it's like i freely i'm like i'm okay with it because i know I know how God had his victory in the end. And, and it, that's yeah. to me, that's what matters. That's great, man. Well, um, just to touch a, a little bit more on that, like these, you, you've mentioned your dad a couple of times, you know, he was a musician and it's obvious that he had some kind of impact on you. Like, what is your, what is like your fondest uh, memory of, of, of your dad? Um, <laughs> Well, him singing all the time, that was my fondest memory. Like, I loved that. But, you know, he always, he had, like, such a good sense of humor. Um, I think that's where I get mine. It's pretty, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's it's a sense of humor, but it's not everybody's cup of tea. But um, I, I think it was when we were trying to play, like, he was trying to teach me guitar. Like I said, he was a shredder. So his fingers would just go nuts like this, you know? And he'd be like, go ahead and do it now. And I'd be like... <laughs> I don't, <laughs> slow down and he go okay now do that it was and still go, too fast mike what are you <laughs> where did your feet like i mean the dude just as well and then he'd slow it up for a second then he'd just end up going like crazy. <laughs> and it's funny because i'll sit there and play the guitar with my own kids and i'll find myself like do, 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 and my son's like how do you do that and i go don't be like my dad do. like you know like just pluck him out really. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's awesome that's great, man. Um, um, yeah, I was gonna. Oh man, there's something else I was gonna ask you just then, but but your story completely made me forget. But that's great. Oh yeah, I remember. If if you didn't have music in your life, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Like, what, what, what do you think your career would be? Um, I probably would have become a. I probably would be somewhere in the medical field. Probably would have been a PA. All right. I thought you were gonna say pastor. <laughs> no. No, I mean. <laughs> Actually, I, I like, I love, like, I think that's probably one of my favorite things is just talking to people about Jesus. But at the end of the day, it's like, um, I, I've, yeah, some of my friends have been PAs and like, I, I've really, I think it's a cool, I've, I've always thought like biology and science and some of that are pretty, pretty yeah. interesting. So like when my kids are like hurt or something weird is going on, they always come to me. Cause then I'm like looking at it and like, you know, trying to diagnose it, even though I shouldn't be. And, yeah. you know, like. <laughs> Uh, I think it's fun, you know, it's cool and, um, you know, to have that knowledge and, and that base and that foundation is just, you know, it would have been cool. Other, or else I would have gone to the Air Force to become a fighter pilot. I mean, that's, those are like the only two options I think I would have had. In my life. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting, man. You, you know, we, we were a lot alike, actually. This morning, my daughter, I tried to get her to drink some water last night because it's something she was going through. And then she goes, she resisted me at first. And then later on this morning, in fact, she goes, Dad, thanks for making me drink that glass of water. It really helped with that. And I'm like I told you, like, and other other little, other little things. I look at her and, I'm, and I and I think and and I'm like, well, the skin reacts this way. Maybe you're just, you know, let's add this to it and see see what happens. Yeah. And she, she's like, Dad, I think you were a doctor. Maybe just don't check life. WebMD, bro. That's, yeah, no, because it's yeah. cancer. <laughs> Straight up, that's what my kids do. Yeah, I ever... <laughs> right. You like, like oh, everything's I'm dying. cancer, and it's like, I think it's, you got a it's headache. Exact- you do- yeah. that's that all oh, right it's like one of those things you died four days ago what, <laughs> what, what? oh cut your nails you died days. four days like, ago ah, i'm dead <laughs> you guys i'm a ghost <laughs> oh great well man that, oh I can't uh, the camera. man that's crazy that's awesome um okay so so talk to me about tension i want to hear w- about this song because it's awesome it's got a lot of great parts to it first of all i want to point out awesome bass awesome drums 
uh, jealous of your drummer because he plays like he's just like you know like he's just chilling you know yeah I, I would be like tuk -a, tuk -a, tuk -a, and he's just like tuk -a, tuk -a. <laughs> that dude that dude can do just like the crazy spills without like moving it's it's like yeah. effortless and then I'll, I'm like how did you do that and I'm like no and then he's like it's not even close you know and the bass player is awesome too on that uh, all i love every element on that the guitars everything even your, your vocals you. too and, and everything but Thank what is what is the song about what, what how did well so, before sorry, sorry 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 before we get into that before sorry sorry another more important question because i talked to you a lot of uh, uh songwriters but my before we get to that what is your initial approach to writing a song like how do you approach songwriting first oh man that yeah that morphed uh, a lot uh, over the years i used to uh, um, write completely different and then um actually our label head came to us and he's like i want you to do co-writes and I, I mean i was all about it it was like let's try it and some of the guys balked and they're like yeah i don't really want to do that like we're good on our own and i was like yeah but maybe it'll give us you know the rest of us were like maybe it'll give us a, a different edge that we've never got to explore and so um you know i learned a lot and honestly like uh crazy story i was at church my pastor was praying over us as we we're getting ready to go do this record and um something just felt different about this record and so we you know i was having my pastor pray over it and this one of the guys was praying along my pastor he said he said all right the lord's talking to me and he wants me to tell you something and, and usually when people say that to me i'm always like okay what are you gonna say <laughs> like i don't like you know what i mean like yeah <laughs> like um but he he was like he said, he said, the Holy Spirit speaking to me, he said, um, you guys can change everything with, if you listen, he's like, there's a sound coming from the throne room of heaven that only you guys can hear and you wow. need to, to listen for it. And I was like, I don't even know what that means. So cool. So we, we actually took that to heart when we went to go write this, this record. And, um, I mean, I sat, I, we didn't go out with anything. Like I didn't want to even write music till we got there. I didn't even sit down to put pen to a pad. I wanted to to just let the Holy Spirit just move within it. And it's like, not to get like too religious on it, but like, like I legit sat in the backyard of our one of our friend's homes and I just listened. Like that's what we did. I was like, let's just listen. And, I, and then the crazy thing is I'd be like, all right, God, what are we writing? Let's go. And then I'd start hearing melodies and choruses and you know verses, and I'd start plucking them out. I'd start humming them on my phone. And then we'd take in these 30 second little snippets to each of our co-writers and then our producer, Kellen, and they were just like, done. I know the whole song already, let's go. And I was like, just, whoa. So yeah, so any, you know, when we go up and write new, new music, hopefully this year, um, that's the same approach. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let, I'm just gonna let God work, you know, to see what He does. I think allowing um, music to be written organically and having space to breathe and and move is super important. I think for most songwriters, it's super important because um, when you go into a, a like a writing process with people with songs that you've already written, it's like people are you get married to a, a certain thing and you really love something so much. And then when your producer's like, that's absolute garbage, yeah. um, you like, you know, you know, so um, <laughs> I like to I like to protect my baby emotions and I go in, I, and I go in, I mean, honestly, I love it because it gives us, it gives us an opportunity to really collaborate, you know, like and not, and not get hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that's the best approach, you know, just cool organically like let it happen because they're, they're like we had one session where we were just banging our heads against a wall and i came out <laughs> of that session and i was like the song is just like it's okay you know but then when we allowed for space to breathe it was just like dude it just it just went man it was so fluid it was just awesome yeah. so uh, that's that's how i that's how my process goes man i just <laughs> i'll pray about it and then i'll listen like so again, Christ is just, just chilling back there. Like, okay, so when you're done banging your head against the wall, can I write this thing? Or yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys should go to lunch because this is bad. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, but that I mean, and I think in all things though, art really needs a space like to breathe because you know, like, um, you can't you can't be the best you can be if you're never willing to try and hear what other people are willing to mm. speak into your music and um, wow. you can't grow and you can't, 
you know, it's like it, it just doesn't work. You stay in this box that you're constantly in and you write one record and you're like, I did that right this way. That's how I'm going to do it for the next one. Then it just, you turn it, you, you turn the same thing. It did, you have different words, but it sounds the same. And, yeah. um, you know, I wanted new influences. I wanted fresh, um, you know, fresh influences on it and people to get a hold of our music and, and hear what we're truly capable of. Because, I mean, if we hadn't done what we did, we would have never written intention that that record would never happen so i'm happy that we did it cool that's a, that's a great that's a great answer man um okay so now talk to me about tension how did how did this song come about what it, what is it about what was the original message uh, yeah, um, <laughs> i still remember those, we huh? were sitting at so just so we were sitting doing a co-write with josiah prince from disciple and oh. um he was one of the co-writers so we we wrote with josiah prince from disciple and then uh kellen mcgregor from Memphis mayfire and then kellen produced it um, but uh, when we wrote Tension, all I could hear was this, like, we were just, I was sort of bringing up the the idea, of, like, we weren't really sure, we didn't have the word tension at first, but we were going for, like, these big, like, grand, stupid words that, like, didn't make any sense, because he was like, just come to me with a word tomorrow, like, what's, what's one word you want to focus on? It could be emotion, it could be anything. So I'm, like, driving down the street, and I'm looking at billboards, and I'm like, what about what about frustrated friends? You know, it's just like dumb things. And so we get there and I'm kind of pushing out the concept to him, but I had little, I had a 30 second snippet of the music that that I was thinking. And um, so then we started getting into the music portion. And I started writing lyrics and it just started going and going. And I, we got to the chorus part and I was like, what if we use tension? And he's like, perfect. And then all of a sudden it was just like, He's like, what do you want to go with the chorus? And I was like, well, play what you just played. And it was like, what if it's, I feel the tension. And then it was, then he was like, yes. And then every one of us were like, tension. like then a big <laughs> chorus, you, you know, feel. And that's how it did. It was so cool. It was just like, everybody was so jazzed on it. And then, um, you know, the song really is about tension, like um, learning to let go. And it's like, um, you know, the first verse says there's too much talk. Um, no, that's uh white flag. I apologize. I always get my songs and stuff, but um you know, but in the song, like we're, we speak about tension and that that battle between like, um, you know, right and wrong and, and you know, um, love and hate things like that. And it's like um, for us, like it, it, there's just this constant battle going on. And so it's it's more about knowing that you are going to face tension in your life. And you, you when you face tension and legit turn and face it and you do it in a healthy way everything comes out okay and so that's mm. what tension is about and this whole record is you know we the band itself went through a lot of tension in the last couple of years not even the last couple of years but a couple of years ago it was just this crazy tension and um where it was coming from like we we found it we figured it out and then we worked through it and um you know we wanted to just write about it like we don't write about things that we don't totally understand because I can't speak to it, but I definitely know that tension is like this kind of ubiquitous thing that everybody feels it. Sometimes it's all around and when it's in the room, you know, it's there. So <laughs> when you face it, you can either face it like this or you could face it with uh, grace. And, yeah. you know, that's how things usually fall into a, a better place when you face things with grace. Nice. Well, was that was that your last album that you that you worked on? Yeah, this tension was the the most recent album we put out. Okay, because right. I've only I've only been introduced to those two songs that that uh, I listened to on the channel. I I, I love the band. I want to check out oh, more. Dude, but you I, need to I, listen to the rest of it. I do. I want to. I want to. But I don't want to listen to it. I, I just I I want to listen to it on the channel. I want to react to it on the channel. Get get people involved. So I don't listen to the do songs it. until. I don't listen to the songs until then. But if you could recommend that I listen to, why don't we start from the beginning? Never mind. I might as well just cover the whole album. <laughs> <laughs> just start from number one, go to the end. Yeah. I mean, you, it'll be it's going to be the best joy ride you ever took. So, what's next for Random Hero? What, what direction are you taking this? As in where we're going or what we're doing right now? What do you mean? Yeah, what's the next project? Are you working on another project? What's, gotcha. what's the next? Move? Yeah, you know, um, since there's not a whole lot of touring happening right now, um, we're actually going to go do some co-writes again in Nashville and then uh, get them down and, um, you know, get them out hopefully and do some music videos. And, you know, we'll see where touring lands this year. It's just kind of a 
kind of a crazy like wait year, you know what I mean? So like, waiting to see when things open up and how they open up and how things look. It's like nobody really knows. But yeah, um, we're gonna put out some new music and um, you know do some co-writes and do some other fun things. So that's where we're gonna be this year. And then hopefully either you know late in the year we'll be back out um, touring again, or you know could be in the next year. Just like I said, it really depends on where the chips fall as far mm -hmm. as the world is concerned right now. <laughs> yeah that's hard it's kind of hard to tell then where 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 everything's it heading. really is um okay so i have to ask this question because i i ask almost every every guest is just to my curiosity tacos or burritos tacos all day <laughs> why what kind Asada? come on man uh <laughs> chicken carne asada um I, i'll just take like regular hamburger i'll take <laughs> I would put like steak on them, shrimp, uh, dude, you name it. I will eat the freaking tacos. Those are my, <laughs> those are my like when we have taco night at our house, it's like we go, you know, I bought this carne asada that I put on the grill and I like, it was my first time. And I was like, it, like came out like a sheet. And I was like, what, what am I supposed to do with this? And dude, <laughs> mm, best thing I ever had. Dice it up. And then red, red or green salsa? Oh, dude. Um, uh, since I'm from Colorado, we go green. Uh, okay. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. Excellent. I, I usually, there's no like pun intended for that. I love it. <laughs> no, no, no. I usually always add like a, like a strange, strange question or a question that's off the wall. I, I didn't come prepared for that, that question today, but if I could just ask you this, uh, if you could have dinner with anyone, anyone currently living or, or from the past, have dinner one night, ask them whatever you want, get to know them. Who who would you have dinner with? Bro, I'd go to dinner with you. How about that? <laughs> okay, well, you got tacos on the <laughs> we got tacos on we, the on the menu. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to it, bro. I yeah, let's go. Let's go. No, I feel seriously, like you can make some mean tacos, son. <laughs> oh you have no idea, man. I've I've got practice. <laughs> if not if not Erica, she's she's a much oh, better no. taco taco maker than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you're ever in California, we'll go we'll go and have some tacos. Heck yeah, I'm down. <laughs> That's, that's let's make it happen my man all right Aaron. well thank you so much for your time and i appreciate that you that you made the time to to come on on the show yeah man thank you for having me i appreciate the time that you know you you had grace with me yesterday i appreciate that and uh thanks for having me on it's a great chat and it's the how we do life people i guess we don't get to have tacos together but we can hang out you know yeah, via that's right cool we, platforms we to... like this yeah man so yeah thank you so much right. also thanks for digging in our music man that means a lot to us it really does yeah sure no it's really great music i i, I love the sound you, you, i i'm a i'm a rocker at heart so i love you know all these heavy heavy tones and especially when you have that pause i feel the tension boom boom god you know this is awesome it's, it's like tacos to my ears <laughs> yes sir <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love tacos. If, if, if I don't know if you know this, it's 3 p.m. for me now, so it's almost time to eat. That's how you know I'm, I'm getting hungry. I just start talking tacos randomly in, conver yes, <laughs> in conversation. Yes, sir. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank That's you so much. That's what happens again. here too, man. It's 6 p.m. here, and we're ready for dinner. <laughs> all right, we'll let you go and have dinner, sir. Thank you so much again for joining me. Thanks for all the for all the the wonderful information, details of your of your life and your music. And I wish you I wish you the best. Actually, um, if anybody wants to get a hold. Yeah of of aaron's music the instagram and facebook are down down below random hero band on instagram and facebook on youtube you can find them on random hero live and their website randomheromusic.com so you can stay tuned on future projects gigging once gigging starts again hopefully soon and uh Sorry. what about merch you have any merch on there Do, uh, can we find yeah, the, we the, a merch. hero random hero music.com yes sir awesome i want to get my hands on one of those be a random hero shirts are they available I'll, I'll see if we have any more in stock, man. I don't know. They, okay. I don't, okay. If we have one, I, if we have one, it's probably buried deep in a box. But if I find it, I'll <laughs> you. You, um, awesome. you need to rep that. Excellent. Well, you, you know how to reach me. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, brother. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, see bro. Ya. Take care. As you can see, Aaron is such an awesome person to talk to. He has a big heart for loving people and his passion to spread love through his music is just super awesome before we head out of here i just want to hear from you familia in the comment section down below what did you get out of this conversation let me know in the comment section down below and as always familia thank you so much for joining me and i'll see you in our next adventure
Peace. May the eternal love and the profound peace of the Great Spirit be with you always. Remember to love your neighbor as yourself and to continue your adventures here on this channel. Click on any of the links on the screen. And as always, continue to spread love, continue to spread peace, and continue to share this music. And I'll see you on our next adventure. Journey well, travelers. Thanks.